gonna get started, and then we'll have uh, you know pretty much the whole time get going here. So a lot of you were at the last session, and I know so many of you, but just I guess quick introduction. Um, Brett Christie, and uh, Sonoma State's my base campus. There for a long time doing kinesiology, then teacher ed, then faculty development. Currently doing a role with CSU Academic Technology Services as a faculty development liaison. So working with different campuses on projects and collaborations and just trying to do some great stuff. So I've been working with people here at Chico and I'll be coming back again, I think November 9th we're confirmed for that to do a session related to textbook affordability and transformative textbooks and materials and possibilities, all that. So I'll see more of you then, hopefully. We're gonna, uh, oh and then Peter. The we, yes, the yes, other part Chico, of we. Chico Health and uh, <laughs> instructional technology consultant here. Other handsome guy up there, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about iPads and using those across disciplines, tasks um, with your students, you know, in class, outside of class can be for um, all the different things that we'll get to as far as the handout. Just to remind folks, if you didn't get a chance, they're at the tall table where you signed in. We'll get to this in just a bit, and you have the URL to access that now if you want to enter some notes into it. We just thought this would be a nice, um, you know, tactile thing if you want to jot down any of the examples or to categorize anything according to one of the Bloom's levels. So we'll go into that a little bit uh, coming up. So you'll get very familiar with that through some of the demonstrations and of course wanting to model effective use and things that you would want to possibly spend time doing. We, will, we don't want to show you things that aren't worth doing. Um, definitely defer to Peter's expertise and all he does in this area. I'm just kind of a setup guy for this presentation. I'll probably be up here another five minutes and then it's all Peter to just go nuts and show you all these things. And if you heard him describe what he does with his phone and has it route through all these things to channel in one area, you know that he does some interesting things with technology. Okay, Peter. So a quick poll for you here, and this will just be a hand poll, is as far as using a tablet, you know, a lot of this is going to be iPad focused, but we can look at tablet as a larger uh, definition. So are you A, a seldom or never user person, or B, do you just use it sort of for um, casual uses for entertainment? C, do you use it for productivity, such as email, calendar, meetings, organizing? And then D, do you use it for teaching and learning? Now, you might use it for B and C and D, but kind of give us a hand for your highest level. How many of you are A, seldom or never have used it? Sort of first person experience. Okay, no shame, you're here. <laughs> uh, B, you use it, but just sort of for casual experiences, for entertainment. You know, it's great for streaming those Netflix movies or whatever, reading. And then you use it for some sort of productivity, your workflow, okay? We're seeing more there, great. And then D, uh, you use it for actual, for the teaching and learning process, for your, you to deliver content or for students to somehow experience things. Okay, a couple there, great. So we have a pretty good idea there. We're kind of a, almost a bell shape on that. So for the session, you can uh, definitely tweet and Peter's gonna lead you through a couple of experiences where you can upload some things and uh, do things through Twitter. So there's that's the whole conference tag there as well. Okay, and then do you want me to, do this part as well? Okay. So Bloom's Taxonomy, how many of you were at the assessment session yesterday morning that uh, Eddie and the assessment council had from 9 to 11 yesterday? So they, they mentioned Bloom's Taxonomy and that was a good framework for certain things and thinking about assessment. And so this is the traditional pyramid that you would think of and the levels going up and through to the eventual goal here, if you will. And so we're gonna kind of map these to that, but we're gonna look at a more revised version here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is looking at that pyramid you just saw, but putting it into this orange slice that a school district had done uh, in Florida. But um, here you would start at the three o'clock position and go around counterclockwise. Excuse me, clockwise. Follow that dot clockwise. There we go. And the reason I show this one is you have those action words that help you to kind of categorize what would go in what category. And so they use the example in the assessment workshop that helps you with some of your student learning outcomes or your activities there. You can think of the action words. But we're gonna go forward to the next version here. And this is a revised taxonomy. The reference is down there with Kathy Schrock 2012. And this is looking at the same categories and looking at action words that relate more to tablets, to iPads. And so you'll see some of those, but I know it's small up there, but I tried to put it in larger print for you in this first column 
and color coded it to match for you for this revised taxonomy. I didn't know what to do for color across here. This is October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. All the sports teams are putting in the pink ribbons. I thought I'm going to put in a ribbon on my handout. So anyway, so this is going to be our framework and we'll refer to this off and on and then you have this either uh, in hand now or if you want to you can download it now or later and use it there as well. Okay. Any questions about blooms? You know, it's, it's a framework, it's a way to think about these things and categorize them uh, as far as the different levels of engagement, involve, involvement, and understanding related to the tasks and outcomes. Um, it's not a, a formula and things don't just fall neatly to a box and stay there. There, of course, would be some crossovers and some tasks have multiple levels from, you know, day one to day five or even across a 15 minute experience you could go across levels or you may experience something for a semester and never leave a level um, never progress depending on what it is okay uh, go ahead Peter and everybody's got that and then this is uh, we had this real quick in the last session this is for looking at the iPad apps here and putting them into the same levels and just give you an, giving you an example of some of those that you might be familiar with um, but, you know, Peter's got a lot more that he'll be showing that are, I think, a little bit more current in some cases and I think uh, more practical in some cases. So, okay. And I'm going to step back and let Peter just go with it. And I'm going to take that mic off again. So. Oh, yes. Chris gets a quality recording experience for those who can't be here today. <laughs> we wish you were with us. That's right. All right. Any questions or comments while Peter's transitioning there so far? So okay. So I have uh, you know a couple of demonstrations that show uh, a number of different applications used in um, a couple of ways, and um, these are the ones that um, I'm going to try to cover today. We'll see how, how far we get, but I, I think we can get through all of it. Um, and some of these are not necessarily iPad applications. Um, for instance, the second one on there, ifttt.com, that's a website, but you can access it from the iPad. But it's going to help us do a few things. Um, and um, the rest of these are either iPad apps or have an associated iPad app. So these all link directly to where the app is. Um, uh, you know, I'll probably need to be hands-on for a bunch of this. So. Okay. No worries. Um, so we're going to start with a little activity where I'm going to ask you guys to contribute. And um, so uh, first of all, if some of you have iPads, others of you may have a cell phone with a camera, I'm going to ask you guys to either take a picture or uh, just send a picture that you already have of something totally innocuous, something you're, you feel comfortable sharing. If you don't have a picture you feel comfortable sharing, then feel free to take a picture of me. Or for added fun, we can take a picture of Chris back there who's manning the camera because I always think it's kind of fun to put the cameraman on the camera and, and turn the tables. So let's take a couple minutes. What you're going to do is take that picture, and if you've got one of those apps that you can, you know, modify the picture, you want to do the Polaroid thing like Ann did with the picture of Brett and I at the beginning, or you want to add the mustache on people, or I don't know, some people have these fun photo apps. Go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is email me the photo. And, oh, I didn't modify this slide. This should say Kelt 2012. I was not aware until this morning that there was an official hashtag for this. So, so um, pound sign kelt 2012 is the hashtag that you will want to use in the subject of your email. And the reason is that I'm going to show you how by you guys emailing me these photos, I can actually have all these photos collected and in a centralized place on my iPad that we can do stuff with. So um, go ahead and do that. I will. Um, I'm going to send in a photo too, because I just think that would be fun. In fact, I'm going to grab one in aviary here. And oh, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll bring it back to that. Um, in fact, I'll send this one, and that way you can see it. Yep. Yeah. Or we'll go back. That is the subject line, is that it's got to have, yeah, and it, I wonder if that'll, oops. 
be nice if that would let me change it, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Aha! Excellent. Okay. Better now, right? What's that? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. If anybody needs help emailing a photo, So what's going to happen is you sent these photos to me. And by putting that special code there in the subject line, my campus email automatically says, oh, that must be one of those photos for the Kelt conference. It sends them over to a service called If This Then That, I-F-T-T-T dot com. If This Then That. So um, I-F-T-T-T dot com is not an iPad app, but I did learn about it through the, um, oh, that's not the right place. I did learn about it through our iPad user group on campus. So it's a website. And once you've created an account on ifttt.com, it will let you do a whole bunch of cool things involving the other Web 2.0 services that you, um, that you use. No idea why this is taking forever to load, but there we go. Okay, you guys can see that. So um, the way ifttt.com works is that there are recipes that you make. And the way it works is, and you can see a few suggested recipes down here. If this happens, then do that. That's the idea. This happens, then do that. And um, these icons represent different services. So. Um, if you recognize the peace sign there, that's a Craigslist search, right? So if something matches my Craigslist search, you know, then please send me an email about it. So that's the, like the, you know, the simpler kind of recipe that you can use. And so there's a whole bunch of different possible things, and people share their recipes. Um, I believe I have a slide that uh, talks about some of these. So, so some of the different triggers that you can use with if this, then that. You could say, if I receive an email, if I favorite a YouTube video, if I check in on some, you know, Foursquare or one of those kind of geolocation games, if I send a tweet, if I post a photo, if I read a news item, if the weather report shows it's going to rain, if I receive a text message from a certain person, um, if I, you know, reach a, a weight goal on this, you know, one of these websites that lets you track your fitness, um, then what can it do? It can send you a file. It can post a status to your Facebook or your Twitter or, or whatever. It can save the text of the thing that you was triggering it to Evernote, um, which is a great information collecting and organizing um, sort of galaxy of applications. It could make a bookmark in a social bookmarking service like Digo. It could send an email, send a text message, it can tweet for you, it can post a photo, it can create a calendar event for you. So it does a lot of different things. Um, so what I did was I created one that said, if it gets an email from my email account with a photo attached, then stick the photo in my Dropbox. So I'm using Dropbox, which is a cloud-based storage service. Um, if you sign up for Dropbox for a free account, and if you sign up with a Chico State address, you immediately get three gigabytes of storage for life that you can use. And then every time you do one of its little things, you can get more free storage, like inviting somebody else or tweeting how much you like it. You know, they, they, they make you jump through little hoops to get more storage. Or of course, you can just pay, and then you can get tons of storage for whatever you want. So let us see what is going on in the Dropbox over here. And uh, so Brett and I actually used Dropbox to collaborate to make this presentation and our last presentation. So we had Keynote files sitting in our Dropboxes, and then we would edit it, and then the other person would see that that person had edited it. And, um, but I've also made one up here called Attachments, which is now miraculously full of photos. How cool is that, you guys? So let's see what we got. We got a super sweet car. And by the way, these don't have any of your names attached to them. The way I forward it from my email, it doesn't contain that. Um, 
Wow. <laughs> nice, I like that. I'm a Volkswagen fan. Someone must have known. Ah, all right. We have our, our uh, keynote speaker, Brenda Allen. More fast cars. Real car thing going on here. I like it. Um, hey, there we go. Taken right here in the session today. Mmm, Abbey of New Clairvaux. What fun. So, um, if you guys, I'll tell you what, if you see a photo you like and you are on Twitter, feel free to write a tweet with the Kelt hashtag in it, which is, uh, you know, hash mark Kelt 2012, and say, my favorite was the, and it could be whichever one of these you like. Oh, it will not be that one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got one of the photographer. That's great. <laughs> These are fun, you guys. Oh. Let the cats wear glasses. Oh, and there's my daughter. A little bit of just tiny bit of photo processing on the iPad. Um, all right, so I've got all these pictures in my Dropbox. Now, the nice thing is that wherever I go, I've got access to these. Um, one of the things that I might want to do is to um, actually put these up in a comparison environment. And so um, I will show you what that looks like here. In Dropbox, you've got a few options of what you can do with this. I could tweet the photo, I could post it to Facebook, I could whatever. Um, one of the cool things I can do is I can get a link to it. So Dropbox isn't just about you storing stuff for yourself, but it's also about being able to share that stuff with other people. So for instance, um, you know, for making the presentations, Brett made a shared folder between he and I. So he and I are the only ones who see it. We both have the folder in our Dropboxes. Um, but I could also make a public link to an image so um, that I could share it to anybody through you know, a, another service or, or, you know, for instance, I think we use Dropbox to share the presentations today, yeah, right? My public, yeah. Right. Um, so that's as simple as, as going at, to whatever file it is that you want. And um, I'm just going to let the finger decide here. All right, it'll be the new Clairvaux shield for this time. And then getting a link and copying it to the clipboard. And now what I'm going to do is uh, show an app called Side by Side. <coughs> What side by side does is it actually lets you have two things next to each other. One of them could be a web browser, one of them could be a file, one of them could be, um, you know, a number of different things. Um, I am just going to fix this hashtag here because what I wanted to do was actually have actually have this run. Come on now, rerun this. Uh, it's still showing the old hashtag, sorry. We'll go back to it. All right, here we go. So on the right side, you're seeing a site called Twitterfall. So this is a web page. And we'll make the, we'll put it in presentation mode here. So it's actually showing live tweets that people are sending right now, including probably some people in this room. Might be a little small to see, but I think I can make it a little bigger here by dragging this little dot over. So this is a neat way to have like basically what's called a live back channel, right? So the tweets that are coming from the room are the back channel. And over here in this web browser, I'm going to just paste in the address that Dropbox gave me, which is going to bring up that image for us to look at. So I don't have, like, strictly speaking, a real point to why I'm bringing up that image and these tweets at the same time. But in an education environment, perhaps what we're trying to do here is bring this up to talk about it. Maybe this is a graphic design class and we want to talk about the graphic design merits of this particular corporate logo. And you guys as students could be sending in your, your thoughts, your analysis based on different elements that we're going to discuss. So lots of different possibilities of what you can do. 
I don't necessarily think this is the best app. A um, couple parts of it aren't as smooth as I'd like. It shows ads at the bottom, but it's free and it does something kind of novel. I think there's a couple others that do something very similar. How do you spell that? When, uh, side by side. In fact, yeah, look for it in the App Store or, for that matter, download these slides later because the link will take you right to the one. So, yeah, there it is, side by side. Yeah, I tried Google searching for it. That didn't work really well because side by side iPad brought up everybody comparing their new iPad and the old iPad side by side. <laughs> so, kind of a neat, kind of a neat app. So, um, so now that I've got those things side by side, I could, for instance, bring up two photos. Um, one in each side, so maybe we'll bring up a couple of pet photos here. I love the poodles, by the way. It's, they must have been very patient to allow themselves to be painted that way. And then back to Dropbox, and then we'll grab, we'll go awesome pet po photos side by side. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So now, perhaps what I want to do is be able to uh, present a more informed analysis of our comparison. So I'll, I'll definitely be making this up as we go along, but um, that's okay. So let's see, I'm going to take a screenshot. Everybody know how to take screenshots on their iPad or on their iPhone? You press the home button, and the lock button at the top at the same time. And it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what application you're using, at all times that will do a screenshot. And that can be very useful uh, because sometimes you're in the middle of doing something really cool and there isn't necessarily a way to capture what you're doing in the way that you want to be able to do. So I've got these two photos side by side, so I took a screenshot of that. All right, so now I'm going to do something with that screenshot. And by the way, that just adds to the camera roll automatically. Um, what I actually want to do is demonstrate an application called Doceri. And uh, Doceri is actually much deeper than what I can show you here. The free version uh, is a pretty cool little application that lets you capture what's on the screen. You can build out multiple slides, so you can kind of think of it as a PowerPoint, but it its interface for building what's on the slide is you know, not nearly as powerful as like a PowerPoint or a Keynote, but it will let you record talking, record what's on the screen, record drawing over what you're presenting all at the same time, and then it'll let you do whatever you want with that movie at the end. Uh, and so you can put a lot of different things into it. So it's very, uh, very useful for annotating things. Now there's a desktop application as well that goes with it so that I guess the idea is that you might be presenting from the computer but annotating live from the iPad in the classroom. Um, and it's not something that I can show because um, one of the things that we know about the way our campus networks are built is that an iPad on Wi-Fi can't talk to a classroom computer that's on the wire. They're on different networks and they're not able to talk to each other. Yeah, so that's something that I think in the long term there will be different kinds of solutions for that um, because there are so many different applications for having mobile devices talk to other mobile devices or talk to wired network devices, things that could involve my not necessarily having to have my iPad tethered to these cables to show this to you, but being able to do it all by airplay to a you know, little wireless device connected to the projector. So we'll see how that progresses in the future. Um, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to build a very uh, complex and robust network structure and also predict where five years from now people will want to be doing something completely different that you know, violates some of the main things you would think of as good network security. So that's what they're trying to balance, that sort of stuff. 
Well, Prezi is more about playing, you know, building a presentation and playing it back. Doceri is going to let us do something with what I'm actually doing here now. Um, so I'll just show you what that looks like. Doceri's in here somewhere. Is that your that is, that's my VDub. So I'm going to use this from my iPad alone. And I can go ahead and start a new project and decide what size it is. And so in Doceri, now I've got the opportunity to do things like, well, I want to bring in a picture. I'll bring in one from the photo gallery. Let's bring it in from the camera roll here. So and at the risk of this getting a little cluttered on the screen, maybe I'll just make it a little bit bigger here so that, oh, I don't want to cut out the cat with the glasses on. It's too cool. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, I've actually pasted in my screenshot here. And as you can see, I could make it small and add more screenshots. I, you know, I could have saved a bunch of the photos and pasted them in here and made a collage. Um, I also have the ability um, to do different slides, uh, not just the one slide. But then I've got lots of other um, annotation tools. So the cool thing is... Yeah. Well, oh, the interesting thing is you're not seeing the annotation toolkit. And I'm not sure how to show that to you unless, well, I don't, hmm, here's a good idea. Let's take a screenshot. And now let me go ahead and pull in my screenshot. Hmm. There's the new screenshot. Okay. Now, do you guys see that? Um, top of the screen there. Do you see how there's this whole row of stuff, little pens and pictures, things that I can actually touch to bring stuff in. So that's what I have been, um, have been looking at. So let me reposition that there. That's interesting. I'm able to drag around the photo, but you don't see that necessarily. So, um, okay. So now I can take a pen. And by the way, I'm actually recording at this moment. It's recording the audio of what I'm doing. So we're going to go ahead and ask Chris, so who's this cat here? Rebel. Rebel. All right. How about that one? Piper. Piper. And here, let me uh, just change color. And cat that wears glasses? Dash. Dash. All right, now I don't know, do the poodles belong to anyone in the room, or is that just a great photo that... It's, it's part of 2011 Poodle Day in Carmel. They have a Poodle Day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought it was like a Halloween thing. I thought that um, these were supposed to be like jack-o'-lanterns yeah. with a nose yeah. sort of thing. Now I've circled <laughs> poodle butts. That's forever going to be immortalized in this presentation. But what are you going to do? Um, but, uh, you know, I could actually develop and, and deliver a, an actual presentation, and this could just be class, right? We could just be delivering it at the time. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And um, it's unfortunate that it doesn't show you everything that I'm seeing on the screen, although maybe I can um, alter that. So... Oh, not my poodles, by the way. <laughs> What's I that? I do have their permission. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, because I am... I am going to actually post this here. Let's see. First, I'm going to save it to my to my photo to my photo roll. So, so it's bringing up a little interface here where I can save it and then drag it over a. Come on, dragging it over the icon there. Oh, it is saved. Okay, I can I could post this to Facebook. I'm not going to. I can post this directly to a YouTube channel. Um, I could uh, email it as a movie file, or I can save it to the photo gallery. So what I've done this time is, is just save it to the standard photo gallery. Right. So here it is. And again, what it shows on the screen is a little different than... Let me make sure I put volume up here. And 
I'm not sure how to show that to you unless. Uh, Pretty decent quality, other than my hum, whatever. So, um, and then I can, you know, position this farther in the recording so that you can actually see, you know, the annotations are going on live. I can back them up, go forward, back them up, go forward. Uh, all right. So, that's right. Right, it's just automatic. It just picks up whatever the microphone's got. Now, um, if I, you know, now that I've saved it to my photo roll, I've got a lot of options of what I can do with it. Um, if I wanted to replace that audio with something else, I wanted to re-record it, I could put it into, um, you know, one of my um, videography programs, like, for instance, Pinnacle Studio, which, by the way, is a phenomenal video editing app, um, and I believe it's free or very low cost. Um, and it was originally developed by, by Avid, which is like the major motion picture video editing software. Um, it's not hard to use, but it's, uh, I, I find it to be my favorite way to do video. But um, what I'm going to actually just do is, is just post this directly using uh, web albums. So web albums is basically an iPad interface to Google's Picasa service. Um, does everybody know Picasa? So Picasa is kind of like Google's Flickr. It's Google's, you know, whatever, photo posting service. And um, one of the cool things that happened this summer is that the campus um, switched on about 23 new Google applications, which you can access using your campus username and password credentials. So students already had Google Mail. I don't know if you guys knew that, that Wildcat is actually Google Mail provided free. Your campus also has Google Docs, Google Calendar, and a couple of others. Um, and you can sign into that too. Faculty and staff of Chico have the ability to go directly into um, Google Calendar, Google Docs. And it's all a Chico-branded Google experience. And um, it differs a little bit from what you would do in your personal Gmail account because you're able to do things like share a document with only people at Chico State, making people at Chico State log in and prove their Chico State before they can see your document or whatever. So now we've added 22 more Google services to that, including things like Google Maps, Google Picasa, Google Reader, um, Blogger, tons and tons of cool things. Google Sites has actually been in there for a while. So uh, this um, Web Albums HD application will let you actually post things to your campus Picasa. So I made myself a little folder here. And it has the first movie I made in here and, uh, and tried to upload. So I can just go ahead and go to the Upload button. And it'll let me grab something from my photo stream. So I'm going to upload that movie that we just did. And maybe I'll tap to edit a caption. And this is <laughs> all right. So that uploads, and it actually goes pretty quickly. Thank you, Campus Wi-Fi, for being faster than my Wi-Fi at home. Um, and you know, um, if I want to go ahead and, and delete this one, I'll go ahead and delete that one. Yeah, it's, it's really um, a really nice application for managing stuff. So since I don't use, so I don't own a laptop. I have a big desktop at home that I use for doing music and stuff, but I hate working on it. So I have really appreciated being able to do things like managing my online photo albums with my iPad. I will actually use the camera connection kit to download pictures from my iPhone or from my regular camera into the iPad and then manage them, edit them, do whatever I want to do, and then post them through web albums to the, um, to the Picasa account that my wife and I use to share photos with the family. They don't touch my computer anymore. And it's pretty pretty nice workflow. Um, and then I delete them off the iPad because I don't want to keep them there either. I just want them all up in the cloud where they're safe from being destroyed and don't take up all the space on the iPad and everything. So that is, that's called Web Albums HD. Now, I've posted that to my Picasa. I also subscribe to my own Picasa account with a program called Flipboard. Anybody heard of Flipboard? 
that has come up uh, time and time again as a huge favorite in many of our um, iPad user group meetings. And I adore it as well. I find it an incredibly intuitive way to learn what's going on and learn about it from different sources. And sometimes I'm interested in diving deep into the amazing resources that are being shared by my Twitter friends in educational technology or the inane stuff being shared by my Facebook friends. Um, you know, the latest women in binders photo or whatever. And, uh, um, but one of the great things that you can actually do with Flipboard is that you can, sub you can build yourself certain channels that you want to subscribe to. So I've got, you know, certain things that I've added to this. But one of them that I've added is just that Kelt photo folder of my Picasa account. So I'm just kind of watching that one folder. And if that were like a collaborative folder that multiple people were adding things to, so for instance, my wife and I share a folder that we both add photos to, I can go and see what's happening in that folder through here. So if I hit the Kelt photos, there's the old one. That can't be it. There's got to be a new one in here now. Hmm. Let's see, somewhere down here. says there's a new thing and the latest is Monday. So maybe it hasn't totally posted to my Picasa account yet. You guys might notice that when you upload things to, uh, to YouTube, it takes a little while, videos to sort of grind and generate. So it hasn't yet come out to the, uh, to the feed. But, um, but basically, um, you can add all kinds of stuff to this. So you can add, um, you know, you can subscribe to Google+, you can subscribe to LinkedIn, Instagram, Flickr, Tumblr, many things. Um, one of the ones that I, I'm really happy about is being able to subscribe to Google Reader. Because Google Reader can it, is itself a way to pull stuff in from other places. So the fact that Flipboard will take stuff out of my Google Reader means I can feed anything else to it. So if I want to read a friend's blog through Flipboard, I subscribe to my friend's blog in Google Reader, and then I just make sure that Google Reader is hooked up to Flipboard, and then it just kind of flows through the pipe. So you may have noticed a recurring theme here. I'm really fond of stuff just flowing from one place to the next to the next. You know, I make these connections once, and then I just leave them set up so that stuff arrives at the destination where it's most convenient for me to act on it, to consume it, to evaluate it, to organize it, do whatever. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm aiming for with this, with this workflow here. So let's just see if that's shown up again yet. Not yet, huh? Hey, web albums, when is that done? It says it's done. And uh, we can also look at that. It says public on the web. Let's find out if it's actually public on the web. By the way, um, the web browser that I'm using here is not the standard Safari. While we're waiting for this, I may as well tell you about Atomic Web Browser. Um, now it would seem like you know now that it's Safari has got stuff like the ability to do you know multiple tabs. That's nice. It's catching up to what some of these other browsers were already doing. Um, what I really love about um, Atomic uh, Browser is the ability to um, I think I've still got one of those, uh, ah yes, I've got one of those image URLs still stored in here. So just bring this up for a second. I often come across things on the web that I wish I could save. And on the iPad, I can save an image, but I can't save, you know, MP3 files or, um, some, you know, PDFs. Sometimes you can, you can try and bookmark them for later and that kind of thing. But um, what this browser will actually let me do is I can save it to my files in Atomic Browser. And then once it's saved to my files, oh, don't quit on me. There we go. Well, didn't save. Only in demos, right? No, only, qu only quits in the demo. I blame if then then that. that 
because now it's going a lot faster without that sight. Wi-Fi is really fast when it's fast. And then, here we go. All right, so I'm saving the image to the files. And once it's saved, oh, it's one of these. That's just its name in Dropbox. Now what I can do with this file, I can view it, I can send it to Dropbox. So from Atomic Web Browser, I can actually send this file into my Dropbox where then I can pick it up right off my computer desktop later because I've got Dropbox on my computer. So what this is called is sideloading. It's a different thing from downloading. Downloading is put this on my own computer. Sideloading is take it from the web and stick it over to this other web thing. Move it over to, the, to a different cloud. So I use this all the time uh, you know, when I'm looking for sounds because I'm a musician and I'll find, I use found sounds in my compositions. I'll find a sound. I'll just send that straight over to Dropbox and it'll just do that. Saved to Dropbox. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess I brought up a bad example because I brought up a Dropbox file, which I've now saved to Dropbox. I could literally take anything that is, you know, found, um, found on the web, you know, and... And you can't do this in Safari. Not right. In Safari, you can save an image, but that's about the only thing you can save. But you can't send something from, you know, Safari directly into your Dropbox like saving a PDF file or a reading or something. You can bookmark it, but other than that, it can't be done. So what this browser does is it lets you to do a little bit more interconnected stuff. And then there's a whole bunch of advanced things that you can do, like increasing font size and changing how your browser identifies and yeah, locking rotation, adjusting the brightness without having to go to your settings. So does it have a flash player? No, it doesn't have a flash player. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, you can't take off Safari. I do have both. Well, and unfortunately, Flipboard is just not going to the not going to the new thing. No. Well, that's too bad. What's neat here is that you scaffold all the way through these. Yeah. Yeah, so you can browse through, you know, a combination of stuff from different places. Let's do the whole work folder and see if it shows up there. Hey, there it is. Highlighting cats and poodle butts. <laughs> All right. So now, you know, I can go and view the original thing, but I want to show you one more level of connection here. Um, who's familiar with Digo? We've talked about this a little bit in our iPad user group meetings because we actually have a Digo collection of bookmarks. So what Digo is is a way for us to not just bookmark something for ourselves to read later, but to bookmark it for others to share. So um, within the technology and learning program, we have a Digo group just for the six of us who bookmark stuff. We come across an awesome article on the web or a great image or infographic. Uh, we bookmark it. We're using Digo. So we actually use a special browser add-on, um, or you can paste it right into Digo, whatever you want to do. And then this builds this whole collection of bookmarks, and we also tag them. And so as we're coming across stuff, we use that. We also have an iPad Digo group. So if we come across a great application, we bookmark it to the iPad group. So anytime we bookmark something, we can decide, does it go here? Does it go there? Where does it go? Where do I want to share it? So um, you know, one of the educational uses of this is that you could actually set up uh, a Digo group for a specific course so that as you're doing research or coming across current news that affects the subject matter of that course, you can bookmark something, send it to that course's group, and in Blackboard, you can actually display what are the latest bookmarks coming from this group. Maybe all of your students are contributing things to a Digo together so that it actually shows that. So that's why it's called social bookmarking. Everyone can contribute together. Well, um, I have a connection here 
where if I hit the little star here, this is a function of Google Reader that Flipboard supports. I can star something. So as I'm, stuff's coming into my Flipboard, some of it's crap, some of it's great, something really interesting that I wish to share, I can star it. And now, I will wish I hadn't closed uh, if this then that. I have a second if this then that recipe. And what my recipe says is anytime I star something in my Google Reader, bookmark it to Digo for me. So that I don't have to say, oh, I'm in Flipboard. This is so great. I wish I could, get the, I wish I could bookmark this for my course. I just star it, and it just does it. So if I go to my recipes here, I know. <laughs> it's, well, it's, you know, it's just like uh, any other presentation of lots of tools. It's maybe you guys will find one thing out of this that seems like, oh, I could use that. Not the rest of it, but that. So. So here are my two recipes. Remember, we have the first recipes on the bottom. If you guys send me an email with Kelt 2012, then send the photo to my Dropbox. And then here's the second one, which I've just activated. If I share something in Google Reader, which happens when I star it in Flipboard, then it becomes a Google or a, a Digo bookmark. So now we can find out if that recipe is working, because there is a great Digo iPad app. That's true. It doesn't, it's not specific, so I could then go in here and manage it. But. Yeah. Oh, and let's see. That's probably the old one, isn't it? Um, the thing about if this, then that is your recipes run every 15 minutes. So it's possible that it hasn't bookmarked it yet. It'll happen when it happens. Um, but this is a great opportunity for me to show you uh, where you can see all of the stuff that we've been bookmarking related to iPads uh, and everything. And this URL is in the presentation. So let's see. Not there. Boy, this is running slowly. Sorry. Wonder if I'm running too many things at once. Yeah, maybe. Always one way to take care of that. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. okay. So part of the TLP knowledge base, which is linked from our TLP website, has an entry when it comes up. Maybe I should switch to the real computer for this part in case it's a little faster. I guess so. Is everybody uploading mo movies right now from their iPads? Yeah, so this is our, our iPad page in our TLP knowledge base, which uh, includes in it right here this part, social bookmarks. So anytime uh, one of the members of the iPad Digo group, which is open to all faculty, staff at, at CSU Chico, you just ask to join, and when people ask, I approve, uh, you bookmark something, it goes to our list. So uh, as faculty and staff have come across things on here, um, they just bookmark them. Here's one that I bookmarked this past week, Future of Mobile News Project for Excellence in Journalism. And the reason I bookmarked it is that it is a report on the growth of the mobile landscape and analysis of how people are getting their news and how tablets and mobile devices are changing the way people get their news. The interesting thing about this link is that people are actually reading more news now that they can do it on their tablets. So that's done by Pew Research, so it's 
not merely conjecture. It's well-funded conjecture. Um, and then we've also got a sort of a tag cloud. Unfortunately, something about our website prevents the words from being bigger and smaller in relationship to their importance. But what it does is it lets you say, oh, I'm interested in iPad stuff having to do with blooms. And that brings up any of the Digo bookmarks that have to do with Bloom's taxonomy in some way. So you can see that Kathy Schrock is here. You can see the Bloom's taxonomy of apps from teaching with your iPad wiki. Uh, so generally speaking, there's lots of stuff in here, hundreds of links on all sorts of different topics. And you're welcome to add to it, invited, in fact. So this bookmark still hasn't shown up in Digo, but I swear that it will eventually. By the end, which um, I don't want to run out of, I think we still have some time. So in the meantime, let me get back to have the If you, uh, if you join Digo and, um, and request to be a member of the iPad group, then, um, then you can add bookmarks to it. But you don't need to be a member of the iPad group in order to access all of the bookmarks the way I did. But, but you'd be able to see them in the app itself, or you have to go to the website? Um, interesting. The app itself. It's actually a browser. Well, there's, there's two. There's the Digo browser, which is about web browsing and bookmarking things. And then this one, which is like the library management app, which is just called Digo, which would, it's going to show you bookmarks um, from, that are in your library of your account. So it's a little bit different. There's a couple different ways to do it. And um, you know, we uh, in, in TLP have been helping faculty to figure out how to use Digo with their class or with their colleagues or whatever. So there's different use cases for it. OK, so I'm going to switch gears entirely, since I don't know when that bookmark's going to show up, and show you a different app, which is it not? Ah, good. It is showing up. This one's actually an iPhone app. This one's called Stick Pick. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that it connects to Bloom's taxonomy and is a classroom aid. So what it does is it lets you put together a little roster of people in your class. And hey, look, I put in some of the names here. Not everyone's here, but I did put them in. Um, and what it'll do is it gives you a little can of sticks. And so as you add people to the roster, what you do is you uh, sort of tag them with one of the domains of Bloom's taxonomy. So this person is at the level of understanding, and this person is at the level of creating, and this person is at the level of analyzing. right? And then when you're ready, you can have it pick a stick, and then it picked Dan Carter. <laughs> no, he's like, and so what it does is it gives us question stems based on either Bloom's taxonomy or Blue's, Bloom's revised taxonomy that are relevant to the domain of Bloom's taxonomy that I tagged you with, Dan. So I wouldn't necessarily show this on the screen in a classroom. I'd probably just have this on my phone and just say, like, wow, now I have a great way to ask Dan, hey, Dan, can you create a new use for your iPad today? So you know, what facts can you collect? Um, and it's, so it's kind of fun. So now you know, I can grill Jim. I don't know. Oh, Jim's right here in the corner. And so Jim has a different Bloom's domain. So all of the question stems are from the domain that's more relevant to Jim. And then if Jim answers the question, I mark his stick used. So now he's down in the corner there. So he's not going to get asked again until I've cycled through everybody whose stick is in the jar. So if only it were possible to just auto-load your roster to it, this would be just hot dynamite. But it's not that hard.
And then I can reset, put the stick back in, just pick another one. Oh, Dan again, unlucky. <laughs> Question, yes? It is an iPhone app, so that's what it looks like on an iPhone. What's that? Not that I'm aware of, but then I also haven't looked. I don't have an Android app to shop on Android for it. You could use it on an iPad. It would just be small, right? I am using it on an iPad. And so when I use it on the iPad, it, blows, it can blow it up big. So you can download it to iPad. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not optimized for the tablet, but it absolutely does work. Yeah. So, now going back to, uh, oh. no, it hasn't ever bookmarked my Picasso thing. Oh, well, take my word for it, it works. Maybe that's not a connection that you will want to do, which, yeah. So there's, there's stick pick. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of different little demonstrated pieces. And maybe before I go back to showing you that URL, I'm going to go back up to the list of, uh, where are those? The list of things that we looked through. And, um, you know, I think this is a good time to ask if there are questions about some of these, or are there other things that you guys think would, you know, fit or have good relevance here that you would like to to share that you've been using? Yeah? The one that, that I would add to the mix for the folks here, um, I'm fascinated how you scaffold with all these uh, here, but the, the one app that I've actually used a great deal is called um, Gradebook Pro, and it's not a free app, but it has cut down my time management incredibly and allowed me to, um, I, can, I can take the roster from Imported using C, the comma separated file, and I can take assignments. I can check student scores. I can I, I take the time at the beginning of the class to put in their email addresses. I can email directly from my iPad, so that the time management factor for me in working with students and individually, I can generate reports and things. So it's a it was I think. Do I understand there's some uh, activity happening at Merlot about peer reviewing different apps, specifically like a whole application them. area? We are, we've been starting to review them. And so you could go into Merlot and, um, and do a search, and you can find uh, some of the apps that's underway. That was fast. I know, right? Um, I don't know if there's a specific app part. Sure. Would it be under materials, or is there another? It should just show it under materials. It should be listed as an app. But no, I can see where. So they have an app. Yeah, maybe you want to. There you go. Look at that. Yep, five-star peer review. So that would just be one that I would add, throw out into the mix for this class. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so there are uh, there's the the Just Blackboard Learn app out there, and currently that doesn't work with Chico State's Blackboard Learn. And the reason for that is that uh, Chico State is actually developing a Chico State application, which will have within it one component will be the mobile Blackboard Learn. So this is an application that'll be on Android and iPhone, iPad, and I think they support BlackBerry. Um, but um, that's under development right now on campus and um, targeted for the spring, although there's a technical matter to work out, which is that Blackboard's version of their mobile learn product that's part of this campus app that they help you build 
um, isn't up to the same level of functionality as the one that's already just out in the App Store for anyone to use. The one that's out in the App Store does things like push, push notifications to students. Hey, you've got a new announcement, you've got a test coming up, you know, a grade's been posted. Um, the one that's in the, um, in the campus app doesn't do that part yet. It doesn't also let students um, load attachments from Dropbox, and that is something that's supported in the, in the regular mobile learn app that's out right now. So we're you know, making sure that Blackboard gets their app up to snuff, and then it's going to include other Chico State stuff, which I'm not sure what all of that is, but I can tell you that there's a working group in information resources that's trying to make this a really cool application for the campus. That'll be free to students. So. And I expect that it, when that releases, students will also be able to use just the regular mobile learn application that's in the App Store now. But they won't, we won't be turning all that on until it's all ready to launch out there. So at present, if I got on the iPad, went to Safari, and went to the Blackboard site for Chico State, couldn't I do most of the stuff just on, on the interface? Yep, many things work in the browser. Many things don't. Um, so there are some times where you're trying to get to a little drop-down menu and you keep pressing the arrow and the menu appears and then disappears. It's, it's not supported on a mobile browser. It's not designed for a mobile browser, but many things work. So, you know, just like with Vista, it was never supported on a mobile browser, and yet I would hear of students taking a test on it, which seems to be kind of a risky thing to do. Yeah, I've got students taking but, my online quizzes on their phones. Mm -hmm. For this reason, the sooner the better we get an official mobile app out there, you know, the better. So, um, other, other questions, experiences? Peter, we're using an uh, app called Flash Talk desktop. Mm -hmm. sure yep. Yeah, Splashtop is, is a great application. Um, it is, in, again, in that category where if you were going to try to control a classroom computer from your iPad because of the network at the school, that wouldn't work. But I use it so to be able to, I can control my office computer from home. Um, I can, you know, I can use my main desktop computer at home to, like, you know, play a, play a web video that's in Flash and it streams it over to Splash Stop on the, on the iPad. So I'm not really playing Flash on the iPad. I'm just kind of looking at a mirror of my computer screen. What's it Splash Top. And it does, it does work with the VPN, so that's a little different around Splash Top. Oh, OK. Yeah, so if you use a virtual private network client from Chico State, then you can connect in. But um, works for Collaborate, too. You can do that on your iPad through Splash Top. You can do Collaborate presentations or Oh, is that right? Collaborate sessions, yeah. Do they? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they just released it this summer. It's it's really slick. Nice. Okay. Is yeah. that a pay app? Because there's software. I can't think of the one that's called where you can access like your office computer from your home computer. And that's, that's a fee. Splash Top is one of those, and I believe it is like ten bucks or something. Yeah, but there's, there's three of them that are here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's two main ones. There's log me in and there's flash top log me in. Mm -hmm. It's more you pay for kind of the server license mm -hmm. and then the app's free. You pay per computer that gets on. Mm -hmm. Splash top is the other way where for you to install on your computer, any device you want to connect to it, you're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And then there's one that's a little less user friendly called Tight VNC, but cheaper. So, yes, lots of good, lots of little. Tricks and I know ways to do things out there. Yeah. Yeah, right there that where it says download and then tiny URL. Write down that URL. That is that is a PDF of the whole slide deck and all the links will be active links, so you can actually go out and you know look at the look at the apps that I demonstrated. Try things out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was phenomenal.